So I bet you guys are wondering why on earth is he shining a torch all over his camera? Well, most of you have probably guessed. I've got a feeling I've got some light leaks with this camera. So I'm doing some tests, which I'll reveal later on in the video. But this video is gonna be about film being expensive or becoming expensive, pushing out people that wanna try film, thinking to themselves, no way, mate, I'll keep shooting digital. That's way too expensive. Well, it's not as expensive as you think it is. It's only as expensive as you want it to be. So I'll run the video, guys, and then uh, I'll come back and let you know <laughs> what I found on this camera. Is film photography getting too expensive? It's a question that keeps popping up online all the time, and most of you watching will probably say, well, yeah, it is. But what about those that want to start shooting film in 2023? Should we be discouraging them because of the cost? Or should we be encouraging them and inspiring them with the enjoyment that film photography offers? After all, they're the ones that are going to be keeping film alive in the future. Film has definitely had a strong following over the last few years. I've seen it and you've seen it. And even with the increase in the cost of used cameras, film and chemicals, it hasn't seemed to put people off adventuring into film photography. Whether they stick with it, that's another story. I've seen many people come and go over the years and I still talk to people today that started film a few years ago and they still love it even though they too mention the rising prices. But then again, everything's going up in price. Film photography is as expensive as you want it to be. For some of us, it's a profession, and if you're shooting film exclusively for clients, then the cost of the film is passed on. If you shoot film exclusively for print sales and the cost of film and paper increases, then so should your print prices. But for most of us, it's a hobby, a fun pastime where we get to shoot old classic cameras, play with the photochemicals and post our favourite shots on film communities for pride and discussion with other like-minded film photographers and also to make friends. So, is it expensive? You shoot what you can afford, even if it's a couple of rolls of film a month. And with that couple of rolls, we've enjoyed the time shooting, developing, sharing, talking about the photographs we've taken, what film, what developer we used, and guess what? We look forward to loading and shooting again. Nothing is deleted. Our efforts are there on the negatives in a folder, good or bad, for us to look back on in years to come. And we are collectors. We're collecting pictures of things we find interesting. Who knows, one day some of our negatives might even be a nice investment. Most people do something they enjoy on a weekend. Some spend their hard-earned cash on watching sports, playing sports, going to the cinema, relaxing in a coffee shop, or cruising about on a classic motorbike or a classic car. But most activities do cost money. And film photography is no different. If you enjoy it as a hobby, then it doesn't need to be expensive. So I'm out today with this old Shinon CS 35mm camera with a 50mm lens, actually 55mm lens, a nice little uh, Takuma SMC Takuma lens. And inside the camera, I've got a roll of Ilford Ortho 80, which is a roll of film that costs eight pound or less. Probably the same sort of prices you'd pay if I went over there, went into a coffee shop, had a cup of coffee and a toasty. I could be out here for as long as I want. I've only got 36 photographs to, to take. Uh, but it's up to me to enjoy myself, you know, go for a nice walk, take some pictures, meet some people along the way and add some more negatives to my collection. Using a chill on CS camera that costs no less than, or no more than 50 quid, uh, you can pick these up relatively inexpensive online. And I get the odd comment now and again from non-film shooters saying, well, why don't you just shoot digital? It's much easier, it's uh, much cheaper and it's a lot quicker as well. That's not my point, you know. I enjoy it and a lot of us enjoy shooting film. We love uh, the whole process of shooting film from selecting the camera, selecting the actual film itself, 
the development process and at the end getting another load of negatives to add to your collection. I do shoot digital as well, but uh, to be honest with you, I usually cap myself when I'm shooting digital. So if I come around here today shooting digital, I'd probably shoot only maybe 30 or 40, 50 shots. Um, but then sometimes it's so easy to just go off and uh, off on a tangent and end up with about 250, 300 photographs to have a look through or the Photoshop. What a waste of time that could be. But um, you know, this is film photography. It's enjoyable and it's fun and it doesn't need to be expensive. It's not only the taking pictures, it's also the developing later on when I get back. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing how many photographs have come out and uh, you know, deciding also what development to do for this film. Uh, the way the conditions are probably going to be in Rodnell at uh, one part to 50, but you know, we'll soon see. But sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. I haven't got my light meter today. The light meter inside this camera doesn't work. So I've been kind of following the Sunny 16 rule. It's not concrete, but it kind of gets you out of a sticky situation. I have got my light meter app on my phone as well but out there in the sun I've been shooting f16 120 uh, f11 sorry 125th of a second and in these shady areas I've been coming uh, stopping up to 5.6 to get a little bit more light in the camera and I don't know until I get back some of my negatives might be overexposed some might be underexposed I might have blank frames I might even have light leaks on this camera. I really don't know until I get back, but that's all part of the process of film. You know, you take, sometimes you take the mistakes and you learn from it at the same time. Hopefully they'll all be nicely, correctly exposed. Film's got bags of platitude in these good films today. Uh, so a little bit of over overexposure or underexposure here and there isn't gonna really hurt. But sometimes we do get mistakes on film. And it's not a waste of time. I don't see it like that. It's just a learning curve that uh, I can look at and go, okay, I need to improve here or I need to improve there for next time. It's a whole process I find is enjoyable. Even if I get bad negatives, I can learn from it and move on. It's not so much fun if you're shooting portraits, you're gonna disappoint someone and waste their time. But when I shoot portraits on film or anything else I consider important, I make sure nothing fails. I use a camera and a meter that I can rely on, fresh film and developer. And even then you still get stumped, but at least you've left nothing to chance. I know that this Chin on CS camera works. I've checked the shutter speeds before I left and I replaced the light seals recently. The film is due to expire this month and when I get back, I shall develop it in Fresh Developer. Nothing should go wrong, as long as I expose correctly, but even then, I shouldn't be out by much. And modern film is pretty forgiving for exposure errors. So after walking around town for nearly two hours, it was getting cold, so I decided to save the rest of the roll for another time. So when I got back, I popped everything into the changing bag, cut the film out of the camera, loaded it into the developing tank, and then I loaded the rest of the film back into the camera for another day. I probably wasted a few frames by doing this, but I couldn't wait to get back and develop what I'd already taken photographs of. For my development, I'm gonna be using Rodnoll. Now, Rodnoll is a good all-round developer. It's like Marmite, some like it and some don't. I find it a good developer for lower ISO films and I use it at one part to 50 and I always get decent results with it and I trust it. For this 35 millimeter film, I'll use just 10 milliliters of Rodnoll. That's for a 500 milliliter soup, far more than I need for 35 mil film, but I like using a minimum of 10 milliliters of Rodnoll. So 10 milliliters of Rodnoll from a 500 milliliter bottle that costs around 15 pound lasts me ages. I've not got a clue what my negatives look like, but now for the first time, I'm gonna see them. Hopefully they are to my own expectations. If they come out well, that's great. If I see one that I think will make a nice print, then that's more of a bonus. If they come out trash, then yeah, a little bit disappointing, but there will be a reason for it. Either I've made an error, the camera's gone kaput, or my developer is shot. And I've just put the negatives in a sleeve to go in my folder. Uh, look at this, you see, look, I've got some light leaks on that camera. It's so strange because I only replaced them seals a little while ago, and my last shoot on it was fine. I've got these little light leaks popping up. One here, one here, slight one there, 
a bigger one there. Um, it might not be the camera, it could be the developing tank. Um, I really don't know. So it's something that I'm gonna to have to go off and investigate, but I can't investigate that camera just yet because I've still got some of that film in there. But that's certainly gonna be the starting point is the rest of that ortho uh, 80 Ilford film inside that camera. I've probably got another 10 frames left in there. Um, that's definitely gonna be my starting point to see if it's the camera or if it's possibly my uh, darkroom tank. And the exposures have come out okay. Some of them are slightly under, some are very slightly over, but nothing that I can't um, deal with, only by fractions. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm quite pleased that that happened to me on this video. In a perfect world, I would have had a perfect negative, perfect photograph to show you guys. The photographs weren't even that great, to be honest with you. I was so cold out there. Um, I just went snapping around. I think the only best composition I got was the lamp with the church steeple and the clock in there, which is obviously all intentional. Um, a couple of other nice ones in there, but you know, let's get back onto what happened with the camera. You can see that I've had obviously some light leaks and I'm glad it happened because it just goes to show to the people coming into film that not everything runs smoothly. Sometimes things do happen, but it doesn't put you off a of film. It just leaves you on then to investigate, well, what went wrong? You might have an old camera or whatever, um, old equipment. I don't know what went wrong. This was my Shinon CS. I've recently changed the seals as well, um, not only a few months ago. So this makes me wonder, the last shoot I did on the CS, which was the last video, they all came out seemingly well, no light leaks whatsoever. But this shoot, for some reason, I had some light leaks and you can see it on these negatives that I showed you, um, I've got some light leaks. And this is a piece of that negative that I cut off from the Ortho 80. You can imagine it sits in the camera along there and the light leak is coming from the top down. So it makes me feel like it's obviously coming from the top of the camera through these seals here maybe. But I'll put another roll of film inside and um, just shot a, a load of blank frames in my hand over the camera to give me a nice long leader. I shot one more frame outside and then uh, advanced. I went into the changing bag and took the film out then put it into a, a film tank for development. I developed it in Rodnol. It didn't matter how I developed it. I just needed something to show through. Took it out, washed it and then gave it a good old fix. And guess what? no leaks whatsoever so i'm really stumped uh it's really stumped me i i i, I, I don't know i really don't, <laughs> i ain't got a clue if anyone can let me know in the comments what to check because i've already checked the camera that seems to be mustard maybe the developing tank but that's the same developing tank i used on the last shoot with this camera with no leaks and then it leads me on to the light bag the changing bag but then it can't be that because i put this camera in for this test in the same changing bag. But I'm not too fussed to be honest with you about the light leak. The only thing is now is just making me think to myself, why, where's the light leak coming from? Uh, and like I said, that's for me to try and sort out. But as for uh, is film getting too expensive, like I said earlier on, it's as expensive as you want it to be. There's films out there like Foma Pan, which are relatively inexpensive compared to your Kodaks and stuff. Um, and you know if your budget only allows you to shoot a couple of rolls a month then just shoot a couple of rolls a month don't forget it's your hobby you enjoy it so every time you go out and shoot film hopefully you're enjoying the process of what you're doing and if you do get problems along the way like i did on this shoot then it's only something for you to investigate try and fix hopefully rectify it for next time carry on shooting film and enjoying yourselves and there was a time before i even started my channel that i would budget myself with film photography so i'd literally only have a couple of rolls to shoot uh, each month and the chemicals as well and paper for the darkroom when all that ran out my budget had gone that was it I had to wait until the next payday so I could get some more film and stuff and I just sparingly go along and uh, enjoy my hobby of shooting film as times progress and I've got the YouTube channel thankfully that can pay for the film and stuff that I shoot showing you guys what I do but uh, before that, I used to have to budget and be quite tight on what I was um, shooting. So for me, it was it was expensive, but it was inexpensive because I was only shooting as much as I could afford at the time. So anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed watching that video. And if you're new to film photography, I hope it's given you some insight and uh, you know, you're not being put off by what people are saying online about how film is now getting overly expensive and it's outpricing itself. I don't think it is. Like I said, you um, shoot as much as you want to shoot or as much as you can afford, then it's inexpensive and a really enjoyable hobby. So keep shooting, guys, into 2023. And you youngsters out there, keep film alive for us old I'll catch you next time.
back home and horse would smash it. 